To start things out, let's first go to the LEDFX website. From there, click on Download, and then again where it says LEDFX for Windows. That should begin the download process, and once complete, go ahead and install the program. Next, find the application and open it up. It should then automatically take you to a web page dashboard that looks like this. Now, under Device Management, I'm going to click Find WLED Devices, and it will automatically add any ESP32s or 8266 that I have on my home network that are running WLED. And if you have no idea how to get WLED installed on an ESP module, I did put together a step-by-step -step video that you can check out if interested. Next, we have to select our sound input. Now you could certainly just use your regular PC microphone, but one awesome feature is the ability to capture only the audio playing directly from a PC application, eliminating the possibility of picking up ambient noises. For this option, you would select Stereo Mix, and if you don't see this in the drop-down, at the very end of the video I'll go over the easy steps to get this enabled. Before getting into a demo, let's quickly do an overview of the functionality. The dashboard is where you can toggle your lights on and off, add scenes, or access any of your saved scenes. But most of our time will be spent under devices. Let's click on floor lamps to begin. We first need to select an effect. There are currently about 20 different ones you can choose from, of which the majority of them are reactive. I'm going to scroll down to energy reactive, and from here you can begin to customize the way things will respond to sound. Now so far, one of the things I love most about LEDFX is that on many of the different animations, you have the ability to individually adjust the colors for the specific frequency levels of music that's playing. So if I want to only have sound react to the low bass frequencies and turn off the mids and highs, that's something this program will allow me to do. Now after any change, you do have to make sure to hit set effect for it to save. Next, let's go into a different device, and this time I'm going to select rain reactive. Here you can see you're presented with some of the same, as well as a few new ways to further customize this specific effect. And finally, once you have everything set the way you like, go back to Dashboard and under Add Scene, you can save the current state as a favorite which will then show up in the left for quick access. Let's now move on to the fun part of demoing, and this is my current setup that I'll be using. The top and bottom diffusers are connected in parallel, which means they'll be doing the exact same thing at the exact same time, and I have them labeled as diffuser channels. The two lamps are also connected in parallel, and I'll have them named floor lamps. For this first example, I'm going to have both my floor lamps and diffuser channels set to blade power, and the frequency range set to bass, and the color blue aqua. This means that the lights should only be responding to the lower range beats and nothing else. Here's the results. Next, I'm going to switch the diffuser channels to only react to the upper mid-range frequencies, and watch how that now changes the effect. And this next example is one of my favorite of these settings in action. And another one I really liked was Rain Reactive. For the floor lamps, I'll have my low frequency set to pink and mids and highs turned off. For the diffuser channel, I'm also going to use Rain React. Set the droplet animation to 1, lows and highs I'll be turning off, and mids set to blue aqua. So I had way too much fun playing around with LED effects, and I truly am impressed with how well it works and the seemingly unlimited options you have to customize things. Hopefully this tutorial gives you a great jumping off point if you want to try things out yourself. And for points of clarity, you don't need to have the Sound React version of WLED installed on the ESP device or have a microphone attached to use this program. You can simply flash the regular version of WLED onto a 32 or 8266 and everything that I went over today in the video should work. Please enjoy the final videos of this in action, and as a reminder, after, in case you're interested, I'll go over the steps to get Stereo Mix enabled.
To enable Stereo Mix, first hit the Windows key plus R to open the Run window. Type in mmsys.cpl and hit Enter. Go to the Recordings tab and right click to make sure Show Disabled Devices is checked. Now if you see Stereo Mix show up, go ahead and right click and hit Enable and then OK. Now if Stereo Mix doesn't show up, then we need to install the driver. For that, first right click on your Windows icon and hit System and make sure to note if it's a 64 or 32 bit operating system. Then go to the Realtek website and download the codec. Once complete, find the download and run the installation. And if for some reason it doesn't let you install things and it gives you an install Realtek HD audio driver failure error, here's what you do. Find the download, right click and then properties, and then the compatibility tab. Make sure the run this program as an administrator is selected and then hit apply and OK and try installing the program again. And if it's still giving you the error, another thing you can try doing is installing the driver directly from your motherboard's website. To do this, open the start menu and type in system and then select system information. It should bring up a long list, but you want to find the baseboard product information, which is the model number of your motherboard. Mine is the Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi. Take whatever model yours is and run a Google search of that to pull up the manufacturer's website. And under support is where you're usually going to find something about drivers. I'll put the model number in one more time and find it from the list and then it shows up for me on the right side where I can then click on drivers and tools. It makes me first select my operating system and then I can scroll down to find the Realtek driver under the audio section. You can go ahead and download the file. Find the downloaded zip file and all I did was right click and select open with Windows Explorer. I then scrolled down and ran the setup.exe file. Hopefully you won't get that error this time and after the install it will restart your computer and then go back to the sound menu and under recording tab you should see stereo mix show up and be able to enable it. So that is officially the end of this video. As always thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions at all.